Vice City. I played the original. Um, I know the other version exists, but I'm not playing that shit. I know Rockstar think that we are all just fucking idiots and ah, they'll just pay for any old shite. Because honestly, they're not wrong. But there's still a bunch of us that aren't gonna touch that shit. When the models you're trying to improve on look like this, and you still manage to make them worse some fucking how? I don't know who let you in the building or how you even ever got to be in charge of this project. I think you're beyond help. <laughs> I think you need you need to find a different career. Sometimes I look at Tommy and I just think, God, the fucking state of you. But these games just weren't about the graphics. It wasn't about having a gorgeous Arthur Morgan on screen. It was just about, you know, okay, this vaguely represents a human, I suppose. Along with some good art direction, so it actually feels cohesive. And that was all you needed. That was good enough. But that said, I do kind of like the original visuals. I actually think it's a bit similar to reading, where as you watch the cutscene, you're meant to imagine in your head what it's actually meant to look like, you know? Like, you don't see Lego hands, you're meant to see real hands. Do you know what I mean? You have to kind of like fill in the blanks there. I think it's kind of interesting. So the graphics aren't that bad overall, just stay off the beach. The collectibles in this game are these little tiki fellas with cocaine inside of them. And as you collect them, you actually are given cool rewards. It's not like GTA 4 or anything where they just give you some bullshit. For every playthrough, I will collect 10 because you get armor sent to your house, which is really helpful. And to collect 10, you never need a guide, you can just keep an eye out for them. But that's something really cool about this game is that when you do the collectibles, when you do the side content, the missions, you're actually given cool rewards. Which I don't know why, but in the later games just fell the fuck off entirely. My favorite one is after you do the pizza deliveries, you get 50 extra health. And if you get that 50 extra health early, it will save you so many times, I guarantee it. The water in this game is fucking terrifying. I don't know why there's so many missions with water. There's so many boat missions, there's so many fucking crazy missions like that. Anytime I'm near the water, I'm like, okay, <laughs> like... I cannot be near the water without shitting my pants. The final boss should have been a fucking swimming pool. Fucking shit was terrifying. Especially because Tommy, he moves so fucking fast. When you're sprinting, he fucking takes off. If you go in the water, you're fucking dead. It's dead. You're GG. All your weapons are gone. All your armor's gone. When you die in this game, it feels like you get sent all the way back to square one. It feels like Tommy gets sent back to prison and you have to fucking live the 15 years again. No sabía que tanta alegría pudiera salir de las tetas de una vaca, muchacho. Me tengo que calmar porque me estoy excitando otra vez. Oh fuck. Oh no. Come on, Tommy. Don't get out that way. Why would you get out that way? All you had to do was not roll over the car six fucking times and drown. That's all you had to do, mate. It wasn't, it wasn't high standards, yeah? I wasn't asking much of you. It seems like every Rockstar game is focused on money, but this is one of those rare Rockstar games where money actually matters. Money actually mattering is really nice because you actually care about the paycheck at the end of the mission. Now, this game can be very hard. Having played it before quite a lot, it was a lot easier for me, but even for me, there's still a mission every so often where it's like, oh fuck, it's this mission. The kind of mission that when you're done, you save in two slots. And you get those two slot missions quite often actually. But those hard missions are nice because they provide a feeling of accomplishment. Every time you walk up to a mission marker to start a mission, you don't know whether or not you're going to struggle on this mission again and again and again, or if you're just going to beat it first try. Which also makes easier missions good because you never know if it's going to be crazy hard, so when it is an easy mission, oh that wasn't so bad. It just keeps everything a little bit exciting, you know, you never know what you're going to get. For a game like Elden Ring, people are willing to ram their heads into walls a hundred times. But when a game like GTA 4 or Vice City doesn't have a checkpoint every two seconds, somehow now it's unplayable. I can't think of a single mission in GTA 5 that provided a genuine feeling of accomplishment because there weren't any stakes. There was nothing on the line. You don't start from the beginning, you start from the checkpoint you got five seconds ago. It's a lot like save scumming, where you save every five seconds so that if you die, you don't really lose any progress, but it's mandatory. It's very strange. One thing to know about the missions is that shooting is way easier on keyboard and mouse. Controlling helicopters, however, is way easier on controller. So the best way to experience this game is to play on PC and to have a controller ready to plug in for when you need it. A lot of these missions I struggled on so much when I first played them as a kid, but then replaying them as an adult, as an experienced gamer, I struggled so much less. I think a lot of us played these games as kids, but you actually weren't meant to. I think in GTA 5 you don't really have that problem though. If you're a kid, you can just play it. <laughs> you're probably going to be fine. This game has a ton of soul. 
For example, I love that all the characters have these brilliant voices, and everyone who plays this game says that the music is amazing, and there's actually not a worldwide conspiracy there because it is fucking amazing. Another way in which this game has so much personality and soul is just the little easter eggs, the little you know, just little bits of love that they put into it. For an example, sharks. I spent all game looking for sharks and didn't find one until after I'd beat the final mission. But it was there, I found it, finally. It doesn't fucking do anything, but it was, I don't know, it was really cool to find and see. And there's also dolphins too. I never knew there was dolphins, but there are dolphins in the game. Oh, fuck! Dolphin! Look, a dolphin! I didn't know there was dolphins in this game. I knew that- but OH FOR FUCK'S SAKE! I think a big part of the fun of these old games was just how fucking crazy everything got. They let everything get weird and the mission would just continue like that. Honestly, I'm surprised even dying fails missions sometimes. That's how wacky and wild they let things get. But it just made everything so much more fun. For an example, this fucking idiot. This is one of the final missions in the game, and he just crashes like a dickhead and I just get the free kill. It becomes so much easier. Sometimes you'll be struggling on a mission, and then suddenly something wild happens, and it just throws you a bone, and it's like, fuck yes. But sometimes you get absolutely fucked on by the wackiness. It makes it so that at every moment during the mission, until you see the mission path screen, you're like just a little bit tense because fucking anything could happen. It just keeps everything really exciting and it keeps you very much engaged. I don't want to keep shitting on GTA 5, but I will. Some of these GTA 5 missions, I'm falling asleep. And it's not that I just hate change. I love GTA 4. I've got a review somewhere. I should probably plug it. It's, I'm just trying to illustrate the differences between old GTA and new GTA. Now, this game was made in a ridiculously short time span, not even a year. So as a result, there's a ton of like little buggy things, which you might find a bit annoying because it is fucking annoying. But this game has so much atmosphere. In my opinion, the best soundtrack of any GTA. I love the gameplay. I love the feel of the game, the way they put so much effort into like the sunset and all that. It really is just an absolute classic and it's a must play for GTA fans.